Hi everyone, my name is um, J. Mikey and I'd like to welcome you to another tutorial, but this time video editing tutorial. This is going to be my first ever video editing tutorial and um, I hope that um, we learn something from it. Uh, so let's get right into it. So I'm going to be using Adobe Premiere Pro 2015 and when you launch the software um, this is the first thing you're going to see uh, so you can click project right here to open a brand new project so let's name it um, tutorial okay so yes so if you guys don't mind I will be using a PowerPoint I taught this um, tutorial at the Mount Zion Film Academy and I'm going to be using the same PowerPoint for this tutorial if you don't mind so I'll show you guys the tutorial first of all so the first thing is um, let's go to page one introduction to video editing um, we're gonna skip who a film editor is a film editor arranges film footage into the final narrating order blah 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 but let's go right into the editing itself so first of all let's look about the right specs of laptops to use um, getting the right computer depends on your budget from 100k and above there is a laptop grade for every price point so it depends on how much you have but um, it's recommended that it is 100k and above because that's where you get things with good specs from Core i3 to Core i5 to Core i7 there's a Core i9 now um, uh, let's get to the next page you see what we mean so now for the RAMs we have 4 gigabytes of RAM 6 gigs of RAM 8 Gigs of byte, gigabytes of RAM 16 gigs for the core we have quite 3 5 or 9 for the processor 1.8 2.0 2.2 etc my laptop right now is a core i5 8 gigabytes of RAM and a 2.5 2.7 gigahertz that is um it's okay for a beginner and for an average user but if you want to go professional like you want to do the heavy stuff then you need something higher than that but because um I've been able to make the best use of the laptop I have, of the specs that I have here. You know, <laughs> cut your coat according to your size. I believe God provides something better soon. Anyway, moving on. So now the next stage is the interface. This is where a lot of people will see um, gibberish. When they see the interface, it gets a little bit confusing. But I will make sure I simplify it as to the best of my abilities. I'll make sure I simplify it to the best of my abilities. I usually tell people that editing is not hard. A lot of people like to blow it up and say, oh, it's a complex software, it's, it's this, it's that. It's not hard. The only thing that gets complex in editing is when you want to do complex work. Like you want to do something that is not just about, that is not just the basic editing. Editing is basically just cutting and joining. Cutting and joining. When you want to now go into special effects, that's where it gets complex. So the interface, I tell people if you can cook, you can edit now the interface this is the interface just like we have seen in our own workstation let me remove this for now now when you open yours it might not look exactly like this don't get worried you might see something more like this something like this you know it's very simple it's just about your interface setting you can rearrange it according to how you want it. I can move this one to anywhere I want, but right now I think it's fine the way I like it. But I have my own default. I have my own customized setting which is my editing space, which is like this. It's not so different. Now in the in the PowerPoint page seven, I kind of did something like this. This looks a little bit confusing, but I'm going to explain it. This is what it means. I want us to imagine that our interface is like a kitchen, just like when you want to cook. When you're cooking, the first thing you do is to get your ingredients, right? Now, you take your, let's assume you take your ingredients from the shelf. Let's look at this PowerPoint. This is the shelf right here. Now this right here is this right here. This is your project panel. This project panel is where all your content, all your ingredients are going to be housed. Your, as you, let's say we want to cook porridge, for example. So your yam, your onions, your palm oil. What is the end we use to cook porridge? Let's assume it's planting 
and yam porridge so your plantain everything is going to be housed here so in the editing sense all your videos your audio your pictures everything would be here now right now it's empty if i want to import anything here all i have to do is double click this and then to take me to the windows panel so i can navigate to wherever the videos are let's go to my videos assuming that's where the footage is and let's say i want to edit uh let's look for something here uh, let's say dara speed tutorial and address code blue for which one do you have here? okay let's let's just take any one we have let's just take um abejoye teaser for example and i click we click open this is open right now if you want to import an entire folder at once you can just click on the folder one and then you click import folder but we're not clicking on we're not importing the entire folder we want to import just one file so abejoye teaser right or let's even go to something more raw let me go to desktop let me go to the abejoye file that we're editing presently uh, where is it abejoye let's say day one and let's go to this right here this one and then we click open and then we're going to see it right here you see now assuming we want to open a picture we want to put a picture so your windows panel is going to be your market where you are bringing everything into your project panel that is your shelf therefore you can write it down project panel equals shelf shelf houses all the content so i'm breaking it down for us now so if i open it again i want to import a picture i hope double click again go to pictures let's say i want to import this picture right here and i click open and boom it appears here now we want to also import a a, a, a song double click again let's go to the music let's say uh fred hammond this is all open you see so now we have three things we have a video and audio and so any other thing you might want to import that you want to edit that you want to cut you bring it here that's for the shelf the next place we're going to talk about is this place right here the source the source monitor now this is this this source monitor i usually call it the chopping board what it means is that anything you have here you know you have a video right now you cannot just Assuming it's not the entire video we want to use, assuming you put an entire movie here and all you need is just one portion of that movie, you cut it in your source monitor before you cook it. Just like if you pick a tuba of yam here, we don't just drop the yam into the pot straight away, do we? No, we cut it first. The ones we don't need, which is the 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 um the body, or what do you call it? the peel when you peel out the outer layer of the yam. You don't need that so you put the yam aside the, the outer layer aside and the fresh yam you drop in the pot so this is where you do all that this is your chopping board so your source monitor equals your chopping board let me see if i have written it out here so the source monitor which is it this is where you decide the in points and the out points of your clip i'll explain that in a bit where the video starts and then i call this the chopping board now let's go back to this now assuming this is the video we want to work on this one right here um this is where you're going to see the area you want to cut and the, the areas you want to cut that is the end point that's the beginning and the end so if i double click this right now double click it automatically comes here right and now if i push play so we don't want to do this area you see rolling uh, stop so i want it from here so what do i do this is the area i want from this beginning i click this place right here mark so you see that i lighted every other thing now i only want it all the way to let's say here before mom stands up just let's assume it's just here right then i cut i click this mark out so you see it has highlighted this area now this is what we want so this is probably the back of the yam this area is at the back of the yam this highlighted place is the yeah the fresh yam that we want right 
so you can now pick this and drop it in your pot which is your timeline i will explain that in a bit i hope we are getting it so far don't forget if you have any questions you can comment you can just comment in the section you can put your, your questions in the comment section and i will be sure to answer let's move on so that is the source monitor right that's a source monitor now let's come down to the next part which is the timeline now the timeline is empty right now because there hasn't been any work done here this timeline is our pot let me show you this is your pot of stew all this you see right here this block right here is our pot so anything that we put here from the market any item we take here and we've chopped it here we can drop it in our pot if you want to you can pick your yam from here and drop it straight that's how you want to cook your food it's fine by me you can decide to be cutting it in the pot too it's up to you this software is a very dynamic flexible software moving on so assuming this is what we want i want to drop it in the pot so i click on any on any of this space right now you see i click on anything here right if I click this, it's only going to drag the video alone. If I click this and drag, it only drag audio. If I click this and drag, it only drag video. But I want to do two of them, so I click the space right here. So I click and drag, and once I release my finger, it drops on the timeline. Boom. Are we getting it so far? now i'm going to explain what the timeline is the timeline is your pot of soup your big giant pot that houses everything your effects your footage your captions everything so everything you see on your timeline just imagine it like you are watching a movie on blc or whatever you can see that this is when you press play this moves can you see it can we see this this moves as i'm scrubbing through it moves let me expand this one so you can see now your timeline is divided into two major pop parts which is the video up here is the video and you can see the the, the, the demarcation line this is the demarcation line right here this line so below is your audio above is your video below is your audio so if you drop anything on your timeline you see the video audio under it you see the audio is really low right now this this white things you're seeing right now these are the sound waves if you can imagine all this um um, these are those decks that used to have sounds that sound waves that move up and down these are the sound waves so you can know what is loud and what is not loud the details of this timeline I will give in subsequent tutorials but at right now you know we're talking about the introduction to the editing software so we're not going to go into too many details so you don't get all confused we're getting into the details later so like I said this is your timeline now this is your pot of soup now this you're wondering that this looks just like this that what is different between this and this this is your programs panel i just call this your monitor but it's or it's, it's it's formally called your programs panel this monitor represents your eyes and your tongue let me let me show you can we see the eyes and the tongue this project panel right here only shows what your timeline is whatever you've arranged on your timeline this is how you sh this is what it shows so whatever you are whatever is happening here if you are seeing it up here for example if i push play whatever this cursor swipes by you see as it's passing by it is playing right here just like when you're watching vlc everything that is that is scrubbing past is showing on the big monitor right that is just how this is right here you need this because without this you cannot know what you are editing you are practically blind if you don't have this this is like your eyes right now so in the kitchen sense when you're cooking you are seeing what you're cooking right you are seeing the pot you are tasting it this right here is where you taste and it's where you see so for example if i put the picture this picture right now you know with this abejoy picture by double clicking now you see it right here if i take this picture i can drag from here anyway and i drop it on top of this one right here don't forget where this is audio you cannot drop it under here because this is audio this is the audio space this is the video space so now i take this picture and i drop it up here now you can see where i dropped it right if i press play which is my space bar by the time it gets to where the picture is the picture will appear now it's even oversized sorry it's, it's really large it's larger than the frame size what you can do here is just to right click 
scale to frame size and it will shrink it into the actual size of your composition that's aside now you see so as I'm, you see that can you see that as i'm scrubbing this cursor through it it's appearing now take notes any image now you can see this block any block you put on top of a block it overlays on that block that is to say if this is here if this is not there you don't see anything if you put this block on top of it it shows on top of whatever it is under i really hope that makes sense but that is even further details we are still talking about the surface introduction now so let's leave that aside for now if i put this picture directly beside it like this what you have is i press play it finishes the bam to the next one i hope i am making sense so i've explained two things now i've explained your timeline and i've explained your program's monitor this is just like a regular monitor all it does is show what is on your timeline this is how you make one invisible and non-invisible and whatnot just let's not let's not bother ourselves about all this for now the next thing we'll talk about mm -hmm. is this your tools panel now in the kitchen it is what in the kitchen it is um your knife your spoon you know your fork everything that is what this panel right here is for now i'm only going to talk about three basic tools because i don't want to confuse everybody we only have three in fact when you're editing 90 percent of the time you're only using one tool the remaining 10 percent of the time you're using another tool so don't bother yourself about all this you are looking at 90 percent of the time this is what you're looking this is what you're going to be using your selection tool by default it starts from your selection tool so your selection tool is basically your hand what you use to pick something drop something pick again drop pick shift you know if you if this image wants to be stretched you can stretch it out if it wants to be stretched this way you can stretch it out you know you know you can stretch that is what let me undo all this that is what your selection tool is for selection tool let us not forget now selection tool is are your hands the next most important tool in fact they're just two basic tools two very important tools yeah the next most important tool is your razor tool your razor tool is your knife so if you have if you have um an image if you have um something you want to cut you cannot cut with the selection tool you can only cut with your razor tool this is what the razor tool looks like you see now if i put this razor tool anywhere and i slice i've divided this image this video into two so now if i go back to my selection tool i can separate can you see that now let's assume how to put this picture in between them and then i close it up so what we have now let me press play what we have now is this so boom back to the picture and then once the picture is done showing it to continue the video i hope that makes sense don't worry if you watch this video a couple of times you 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 would begin to grasp what i'm saying but i believe i really hope that i'm making sense right now the last thing we're going to talk about the last panel in this entire interface is your effects panel now your effects panel is different from your project panel but it is similar it is similar because it also houses something it holds up content of some things but not not um footage or video content but effects it holds the effects now what kind of effects in the kitchen sense it holds your your spices salt maggi uh, seasoning thyme curry everything your, your 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 seasoning when you're cooking you need you need to add some spice into it you know you can't just cook like that if you cook like that that's fine but to make it nicer you add effects so in, this is it right here now let's go back to this this you can see we have audio effects audio transitions video effects video transition let me explain starting from the audio effect let's open the folder boom you can see analog delay balance blah 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 you don't need to bother yourself too much about all this the most important ones we use is uh, let's say in subsequent tutorials i will show you guys how to use some of the most important effects for filmmaking like phone call effects you know when you're hearing the voice at the end of the phone and it's sounding you know yeah i'm good how is everything yeah everything all right that sound 
we usually use the high pass filter for that so you just click this high pass drag and drop on your audio block don't drop it on video it's not gonna work you can only drop it on audio all right now that's that about the audio effects let's close it now we have the audio transition transition is when there are two audio blocks together you want to you want to give a transition to them you don't just want it to cut you don't want it to cut and start that one you want it to like fade into each other or blend into each other you use this audio transition so crossfade if i open up crossfade you will see the three major effect constant gain constant power exponential fade i don't care how this three works but they all sound similar in my ears but i use most of the time i use my constant gain that is if i don't want a sharp cut let me give an example let's say i take jesus is all and i cut a portion of it from here to here and now see i'm clicking my audio drag audio only i click and i drag and drop it right here and now if i press play it's going to be sharp listen Do you see that as a sharp cut? I'll play it again. But we want it to fade into the next audio. So what do we do? I click now. Audio transition is used for in between two blocks. That is in between. Let me expand this. You can expand this by either dragging this or by clicking the plus and minus on your keyboard. So I'm expanding this now. Now look at these two. We want to blend them together. So we click the constant gain right here drag you see it has highlighted so we drop so right now if i play it this is what you hear this here is a smooth exit now it's no more sharp undo if i undo this now you hear it again let's put it there so it's almost like a cello tape do you hear that that's what i use it for most of the time so let me do it you can even expand this if you want by clicking it and expanding however way you want it so okay moving on so that's this that's now video effects boom we have the adjust blur and sharpen channel color correction this is where we do all the color correction now you're assuming i want this image itself to be let's say bluish don't let me get into that that's the second level of tutorial and that will be my next tutorial but anyway these are the effects color correction let's open up color correction so you can see brightness and contrast change color color balance don't bother yourself too much about this that will be in our next tutorial see i've dragged this and i've dropped it on this image now if i go to my effects control i go to brightness i can tweak it see how bright it is how dark it is can you see that that's why altering this number we'll go to that in the next tutorial let me let's leave that for now so i don't confuse you guys okay now that's for color that's for um video effects now video transition is just like the when you want to transit two videos you want to blend two videos together but how do you want to blend them the most common ones we use are in dissolve folder which is the additive dissolve cross dissolve deep to black deep to white let me show you how it looks like now i want this one to blend into this one but more like going into black and then going into the next image so how do you do that click this one and drag into the center can you see into the center of the two the two footage and then if i click this fade in open can you see that it's different from it's different from a sharp cut you see that it's same thing with deep to white let's do deep to white this one is nice for flashbacks see that film dissolve morph cuts you know so these are the basic ones we use now next tutorial i'll tell you the basic ones that we use for filmmaking so you don't start dabbling into some things and get yourself confused basically cross dissolve deep to black deep to white now video transition yeah we just talked about that so this is the basic of video editing right if you want to let's assume i want to put let me delete all these ones assuming i want to lay this image and then i want to put the music to be playing under it to be playing in the background i don't want the music playing in the foreground but in the background so i want mom to still be talking but music playing under it you know this is my specialty background music and sound effects so yeah anyway let's move on so let's assume this music is to be playing while mother is talking there are two ways you can increase your audio this audio right now is just too low so let's right click audio gain 
you see i just came by how many decibels so let's so let's assume like eight decibels boom you see that's that's risen up a bit but it's not good enough let's do it some more audio gain increase 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 17 18 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19. Yeah, so yeah, some something like this, yeah, something like this. Can you see that? So let's assume we want music playing while she's talking. So let's come to the beginning of the music, and uh, from here, starting point, from here to here, ending point. So I drag this under. Don't drag it on top. If you drag anything on top of anything on Adobe Premiere Pro, it will automatically delete whatever is under. It does not care who you are. So don't make a mistake of saying, oh, I want the two sounds playing together. I'll put them together like this. If you do this, let's assume I drop this here. Boom. By the time I take this one away, by the time I take this one away, the original audio is gone. It's gone. So now we need to put this back here, right here. See that? So now it's even gone. So let me undo, undo, undo. So you put it under. Let me move this a little bit so you can see. Okay, you see that? So right now it's too loud. So we have to reduce this the song. Right click, audio gain, bring it down. Boom. There are also faster ways you can increase or reduce audio, but I don't use it often. That is this. You can see a line right here in between this, in between these blocks. If you increase, if you shift this line upward, you see it's higher. If you reduce it, it's lower. This one too, if I increase it, it's higher, if I reduce it, it's lower, but it's not as effective as audio gain. So check this out. It's louder. If I bring this down, it's low, but the song is now audible. So that's basically that. So assuming we want another footage, let me right click and let me double click here, drop in another thing from videos, for example, let's say uh which one okay so i have a joy teaser for example and then i drop it on the timeline can you see that the time i play this one it continues can you see that's just basically editing you see that editing is simple so assuming you have like several footages and then you want to be cutting and joining so you can go back to your blade i mean your razor tool cut cut Go to your pen tool, delete, bring this one, close it up. Oh, sorry, that was too much. Close it up. You know, it's very simple. Before you know it, you've edited. You know, let me see if there's anything else I didn't touch in the introduction. And I saw some monitor, the project panel, the timeline, the project, blah, 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 blah. audio meter effects. Oh, yeah, I did talk about the audio meter. That's straightforward. This is the audio meter, in case you're wondering. Whatever you play here, the audio meter reads it here so if your music is too if your, if your audio is too loud for example if i audio gain this now to a very high point and i'm playing this is a distorted image you see it's picking red this is bad it's very bad it's wrong okay. your sound mustn't be picking too much above this area if it is also in this area it is too low so I hope with this few points of mine, I've been able to convince you that editing isn't hard. Oh, by the way, if you want to export anything that you have edited, let me expand this for you. Assuming this is everything you've done and you want to export it into a video that you can watch outside the software, you come to this point right here, right? And then you click, you press zero, I'm sorry, oh, there is a there's i and o just like you do to your source monitor you can also do it to your final work because you need to highlight the area you want to export right so come to the beginning you press i come to the end of what you want to export and you press o now it has highlighted the area so this area is what it's going to export so by the time you press let, don't let me do shortcuts yet file uh where is it again export media you see the short code is ctrl m so i don't go through this long process file export media aka ctrl m and then to bring up the next um thing ctrl m
so it brings this up right very simple output name these are the things you can touch the name you want to save it as so click this to open so put put it wherever it is you want to save you want to save it on your desktop page you can now save it as tutorial or whatever save you can increase this to 100 i usually use mpeg 2 right i save mine as mpeg 2 you can experiment other things but this is what i use if you're not sure of the of the formats to use just click match sequence settings and the software will give you a setting that it feels is the best but i use mpeg 2 and then you click export and then export to wherever you allow it to export to let me see if there's any other thing left to talk about i've talked about this i've talked about this okay i think that's basically it so zooming in and zooming out yeah uh up and down arrow keys let's see that next cancel so zooming in and zooming out don't forget is the plus and minus you press to x zoom in minus to zoom out um if you have any questions like i said please put in the comment section and i'll be sure to explain and if the comments are frequent i'll probably do another tutorial about that but my next tutorial is going to be about more specific things more specific things how to um synchronize sound how to um, apply effects and so on and so forth so i'm looking forward to that but for now i hope you've learned something about adobe premiere pro and you've seen that it's not as tough as it as people say it is once again my name is j mikey and i'll see you in the next video tutorial don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the subscription button below and click like if you like my video because it helps a lot thank you very much